Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to read the refrigerant gauge set, including the temp reader, in order to tell if you're low on refrigerant. Uh, in this case, we actually are low on refrigerant on an R410A condenser, and we're going to be finding the refrigerant leak with the ultrasonic leak detector and also the bubble leak detector. So we have our high side gauge with our red hose connected to our high side line right here. That's the liquid line. That's the small line. And that's where we have liquid refrigerant heading into the indoor coil. And you have the low side gauge with the blue hose connected to the large suction line. So that's the return of the refrigerant vapor heading into the compressor. Uh, right here we have our temp reader with our T1 on the suction line. And we have our T2, which we're presently on T2, on the liquid line. So you see on the liquid line we're presently reading 89 degrees and <clears throat> what we're doing right here is we're checking subcooling because the unit has a thermostatic expansion valve at the inlet of the evaporator coil. So that's how I know that we need to check it with this, the temperature here and the pressure and sat temp here. If the unit had a piston or a capillary tube then we would need to check the refrigerant charge with the T1 measurement on the suction line and the low side gauge. But since this unit has a thermostatic expansion valve, we're going to read our pressure, and the pressure reads 279 PSIG. We bring that in, and we're reading on the pink inner ring, since this is our 410A refrigerant, we're reading a saturated temperature in the middle of the outdoor condenser of 90 degrees. So 90 degrees minus 88 degrees, and we have roughly 2 degrees of subcoil. So we can get actually more precise reading right here if we, if we press the decimal point right here. Uh, so yeah, we're reading two degrees of subcooling. So the unit up on the rating plate says it's calling for 10 degrees of subcooling and that means that it's low on refrigerant. So we're taking the front cover door off of the evaporator coil and we're gonna be searching for leaks. We're gonna be using the AccuTrack VPE GN Pro in order to find the leak. This is an ultrasonic leak detector and then we're going to be using the earphone supplied as well. Now we're going to go ahead and move the camera inwards and we're going to use bubble leak detector just so we can see the bubbles. Hopefully you can see that bubble. It's just slowly, slowly forming. So we have two options here. One is to fix this leak. The other is to replace the evaporator coil. And in this case, uh, I showed the homeowner how the tubing looks. And basically, I showed them where we found the leak at. And, you know, they're saying that basically what's to stop another leak from happening at another joint. And in this case, I agree. I like to typically fix the leaks. But in this case, I do agree. You know, we'll go ahead and replace this evaporator coil with an aluminum one. And the instead of having a galvanized tin plate touching the copper tubing, the new ones are aluminum tubing with an aluminum plate and aluminum fins. So it doesn't seem to have uh, any issues with leaking in that spot, at least to this point in time. I've had pretty good success with them. If you're looking for the AccuTrack VPE GN Pro ultrasonic leak detector and earphones, I have that link down in the comment and description sections below. And I tell you what, I have have, uh, have had great success with the ultrasonic leak detector versus the sniffing tools. Uh, so, so I'm really happy and I'm really relying on this ultrasonic leak detector now in order to find leaks. If you want to support this HVACR training channel, click right here. 
If you want to subscribe, click right here. And if you're looking for another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.